I wanna talk about self-awareness today. Um, oftentimes in workshops, conferences, uh, different things that you go to, one of the big topics is emotional health. I was recently at a conference and heard about 16 different speakers and I think about at least a third of them talked about emotional health. And part of emotional health is being self-aware. Now when I talk about being self-aware, I'm not talking about self-enlightenment or becoming the better you or anything kind of weird like that. Really, what I'm talking about is this. We'll use this definition today. Conscious knowledge of one's own character, feelings, motives, and desires. Again, conscious knowledge of one's own character, feelings, motives, and desires. One of the reasons I'm so passionate about self-awareness is because it's been a big part of my journey um, as I've grown in my relationship with Christ and also as I've grown as the leader he's called me to be. I remember one time I was out with one of my mentors who was my pastor, my lead pastor at the time, and we were out to lunch and we were sitting there and we were chatting and we just happened to be out with one of my other friends who is a, uh, a youth pastor. And as we were talking, we were talking about self-awareness and my pastor looked at me and he said, Josh, you're very people aware and others aware, but you're really not self-aware. And I remember the feeling I had, like it hurt my feelings. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, and you're saying this right in front of other people? And I, th I got to think, I was kind of like offended at first. And I started to think about it, I'm like, oh, I'm like, you know what? Actually, I, I think he might be right. I started looking at different um, areas of my life. Here's the deal. I've always been really good at picking other people apart, kind of like um, maybe questioning motives and maybe even honestly, you could even say discerning to a certain extent. I'm discerning about other people. I think it's one of the gifts God's given me. But when it comes to being self-aware, it's something that I've really had to actively uh, uh, pursue and being intentional, intentional about growing in. Um, when you talk about be becoming self-aware, you are saying, I want to be all that God has called me to be. I want to use all the gifts that he has given me and the person he's made me to be with a personality and all of that. And I want to be all that he's asked me to be. Um, a Christ follower views self-awareness through the lens of stewardship, not selfishness. When you think about being self-aware, you're not thinking, oh, uh, I want to do this for me. You're saying, no, I want to do this because I know when I'm more self-aware, when I know myself better and who Christ has called me to be, I'll be a better steward of the gifts and the calling that he has for me. Um, being self-aware, you ask questions like, who am I? Are my motivations lining up with God? Am, am I acting out of my motivations in a way that's pleasing to God? Um, even Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So it's not selfish to say I or me, I'm the one doing this because it's a partnership. Christ says, I can do it all, but I've chosen you. So that's what we're going to talk about today, being self-aware and, and how important it is. Um, it's not self-centered to be self-aware. Um, Christ chooses us, so we need to do a good job of understanding why we do what we do. And also this, this is a big part of self-awareness, how we come across to others when we do it. We want to understand ourselves better in order to present ourselves as a pleasing offering to God. Maybe you've been around someone who isn't very self-aware. Apparently, if you've been around me, you have been around someone who's not very self-aware. Um, but there's some funny characteristics about people who are, aren't very self-aware. Maybe you've been in a meeting with someone and it gets awkward. Oftentimes, if people are not self-aware, it can be awkward. And here's the deal. In kids' ministry, I'm just going to say this to kids leaders and pastors. In kids' ministry, we can't really afford to not be self-aware. Aware. People already look at um, kids ministry as the place where, you know, Mr. Bean or Mary Catherine Gallagher, that's where they, um, they volunteer, you know, superstar, <laughs> smell my armpits. Okay, we have to be self-aware as kids leaders because we're called to a foundational ministry and we want the sharpest and the best of the best to be involved in kids ministry. But there is a perception of, not, of people not being very self-aware. I just want to get real about that because that's just the truth of it. We want to change that perception. We want to be the most self-aware. Uh, maybe uh, awkward one, another thing that people who are not very self-aware, they come across insecure, self-centered, they cause unneeded tension. I remember one time I was in a meeting with um, our staff, our, our staff at my church, and um, someone, I, someone said something to me, and I prefaced, I said, no, I'm not being defensive, but this is why this happens, and this is blah, 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 blah. And my lead pastor looked at me, and he said, you always say the thing you're not right before you are that very thing. 
And I thought that was really funny. I said, I'm not very, I'm not, I'm not defensive. And he said, yes, you are. You're very defensive. I'd say, I'm not emotional. I do that a lot. I'm not emotional. But, but and, and he go, yeah, you're very emotional. You're very defensive. You're very emotional. But it's not always negative. Sometimes, honestly, it's, it's positive, too. Things we don't know about ourselves in the positive way. We're not self-aware enough to capitalize on those. One time we were going around and talking about all the things that are positive about each person. Um, and I remember it went to one of our, our discipleship pastor. And she says, Josh, you are so passionate. I just really love how passionate you are every time that you talk about something and you care. And I thought to myself, what? I'm not, I don't, I'm not passionate. Am I passionate? Wow. That's a great example of just not being very self-aware. It's not just about the things that you're not good at, but also the, the gifts that you've had and, and how you come across to other people. A couple other things that it could, when people aren't very self-aware, they can come across as prideful without knowing it. And these are the two biggest things. Uh, fear. When, when someone's not very self-aware, they come across fearful. And being not very self-aware makes you limited. When you're not self-aware, you're limited to be all that God has asked you to be. Why is that? Because oftentimes when we're not self-aware, we act out of fear. And um, fear is limited, but faith is freedom. When, when we act out of fear, we're limited in what God has called us to do. Self-awareness allows you to live and lead out of your strengths while mindful of your weaknesses. I think that's a super important thing to remember, is that um, it's not that you aren't aware, aware or you want to be over aware even of the things that you're not good at and think about those all the time. I'm not good at this. I, I, I'm, I'm, this is a fault of mine. This is how I act. This is how I look, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. That's not it. But you just want to be aware of those things so that you can capitalize on the things that whether you're good at, your giftedness, who God has really called you to be. When you don't understand who you are, you limit your ability to do all that God is asking. Being self-aware, this is probably the biggest, if you could walk away with just one, one statement from this, it's this. Being self-aware means you know whose you are and you let him tell you who you are. Again, being self-aware means you know whose you are and you let him tell you who you are. So anyways, with that in mind, and since it's been my personal journey, I want to tell you a few of the things that I think, a few of the ways that you could become more self-aware, a few tips in becoming self-aware. Um, for myself, these have been very helpful to me. I'm sure there's a lot more than just these, but here's just a few things that you could do in order to become more self-aware. Um, number one is this, get alone. Get alone. I'm just learning this myself because in my role that I'm in right now, my job, I'm alone more often now than I ever have been my whole life. Um, I'm alone a lot in the car. I end up in hotels sometimes by myself, traveling from, to conferences and speaking and meetings and all this kind of stuff. And at first, you know what I, I said to people? I go, I hate being alone. I'm not an alone person. I've always said that. I, I don't like to be alone. Um, well, it's lonely. <laughs> Um, but here's the fact. I, I felt like this happened about a year ago. God began to speak to me, and he, he told me, he said, when you say, I don't like to be alone, that's a slap in my face. Because when you're alone, do you know that you're not actually alone? And that's become something that's really huge for me, is realizing that when I'm alone, I'm not alone. I'm, I'm with the most present God that I don't have to be lonely. And this is stuff we talk about, we teach even kids and adults. You're not alone. God's always with you. But when you actually are alone, that's even that language that I use, actually alone, you're not alone. And God's really been telling me that. Here's the deal. When you're alone, God tells you who you are. I've learned more about myself in this last year than I ever knew before. I've come to a better level of um, self-awareness because of God being the one to tell me who I am. I love to read books. I love to listen to podcasts. I love all that type of stuff. Um, but I think sometimes what we can do is we swap out the voice of the Holy Spirit for Andy Stanley, Craig Rochelle, the list goes on and on and on. And those are guys that I aspire to be like. But you know who I really want to be like? Jesus. And so here, here, here's the thing. Being alone, God tells you who you are. Being with other people, oftentimes we find ourselves comparing. So that, that's the first thing, um, to be alone. I, I, I wrote this on a personal retreat. I said, um, this is in my journal, 
Could it be that my desire to be around people was really a part of a type of sickness inside of my soul? The longing for approval of man. What is it about being with God alone that I would even try and avoid? So here's my question to you. What would God speak to you about yourself if you stopped moving long enough to hear him clearly? What would God speak to you about yourself if you got alone with him regularly? Second thing is this. Uh, One, get alone. Two, read Psalms and Proverbs. Or really just in general, read the Bible. Here's the deal. I don't want to rabbit trail too much here, but I can't think of anything that helps you become more self-aware than reading scripture, reading God's word revealing himself to us. And when I talk to so many kids leaders, I hear excuse after excuse, and it feels like I'm getting punched in the stomach. It makes me sick. How can we make excuses? I'm not much of a reader. Oh, I just, I'm so busy. I just have the, well, it's hard for me to stay on on any kind of pattern because then I, I feel like my motivation at that point is just to stay on track. You know what? Honestly, let's put excuses aside and get back into reading our Bible and our scripture, the thing that feeds us more than any other busy thing or whatever. Even if you feel like, oh, it's becoming more rote or it's becoming kind of like a discipline. Boom. That's exactly it. It is becoming a discipline. It should be a part of who you are. It should be a part of what you do. It's not always going to be some emotional experience, but the number one way that God reveals himself is through his word. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. That's Hebrews 4.12. God's word reveals the truth about who you are in relationship to him. And you know what one of the scariest things, maybe for some people when it comes to reading the Bible, is it really reveals your motivation. It reveals why you do what you do. But that's something that should be exciting. Side note, when it comes to self-awareness, it is kind of scary sometimes to be self-aware because you, you start noticing and really thinking, going down deep and going, well, why did I do this? Why did I say this? Why did I tweet this? Why did I text this? Why is this the thought going through my mind towards my leaders, towards my, towards my team, towards my kids? But when you, when you really start diving in and figuring out who God says you are, through spending time with him, whether it's just time with him or time reading the Bible, um, it becomes something that actually can be kind of fun, really, honestly, because you start to understand, this is why I do what I do. And then he's so loving and he's so kind that he comes alongside you and he says, I love you, even if your motivation was a little off. I know, I know what the motivations of your heart are. Here, just make a little slight adjustment. And he's so kind and, and caring with us to do that. He cares about you as an individual. Becoming self-aware, remember, is, is letting him tell you who you are. Question two, what's your reading plan? Are you actively seeking truth in God's word? I would challenge you with that. What is your reading plan? Do you have a plan to, to be reading your Bible on a regular basis? That shouldn't be something that sounds coming out of my mouth, something that goes in one ear and out the other. I'm sad that it's gotten to that point, even for sometimes when I listen to a message. That's just horrible. It's the number, one, of the, one of the main things that we should be driving people towards. So, yeah, anyways, as a leader, that's big. So let's be doing that. Um, uh, a third way is this. Find a way to process thoughts and feelings. Find a way to process your thoughts and feelings. That will help you in self-awareness. For me, this is journaling. And I don't even do it as much as I should, but I'm always amazed when I write down at the end of the day the thoughts that are going through my mind and just even how my feeling comes out in in my words. That's journaling. That's for me. That's not for everyone. But I know that I'm I'm kind of a writer. And um, sometimes God speaks. He speaks to me and through me as I write. And I'm just like, whoa. That's exactly what was going on here. So um, I guess my question to you, and this would be, what what do you do to get perspective on your thoughts and feelings? Are you processing with a person, um, spouse, friend, whatever that is? But that will help you to become self-aware. And I think one of the safest things, honestly, about journaling is that it's really between you and God. Um, It's like prayer. Um, uh, That's a very safe place to to process through some of the things that you, you're not sure if you'd want other people to hear them um, because you don't know if you're saying them articulately, articulately, see, funny, articulately, um, or you don't know if you're, um, you, don't, you also don't know if 
uh, even you believe what you're saying, that's okay. Put it on paper and, and God will work with you on that. So that's mine. Um, another thing you can do to become self-aware is ask a mentor. Lean into the wisdom of the wise. This can kind of hurt, but like I said, you learn to love it. Um, I have a couple people in my life who I'll call, and sometimes I'm afraid to even ask the question, what do you see about me here? That I'm, Am I coming across like this? And those people will say, um, yeah, yeah, I think you can make a, a couple adjustments here or there. But who are a couple people that you have in your life um, that you can trust to tell anything, even when it hurts? The last thing is this. Seek God's heart. To become self-aware, seek God's heart. Ask him. Proverbs 21.2 says, People may be right in their own eyes, but the Lord examines their heart. The Lord will tell you. He's always speaking. The question is, are we listening? But he'll tell you specifically. If you just spend time to ask him, God, what do you think about this? Who, when, when, when I'm thinking about this, how, what are my motivations? God, when I, when I say this, how is that coming off. God, am I leaning into all that you've called me to be, or am I acting out of insecurity? And God will speak to you. You're a son, you're his daughter, you're his child. He will speak to you. People may be right in their own eyes, but the Lord examines your heart. He knows everything that's going on in there. He actually knows you better than you know yourself. Um, I think it's interesting that the Hebrew word for heart in this Proverbs is the word lab. That means the inner man, the mind, the will, the heart, and the understanding. Those are all, all things that God will help you with. I'll just wrap it up by asking you this question. Do you know who you are? Maybe even a better question would be, do you know whose you are? Self-awareness is knowing whose you are and letting him tell you who you are.